Chapter 5, just some physics. We're looking at force of constraint. I'm going to do another friction problem. So in this video, I'm going to look at the problem of a block going sliding up a plane with low friction. Actually, I want to look at it sliding up and then back down. So this is low enough friction. So if I push it, it goes up and slows down and stops and then starts sliding down the plane. If the friction is high enough, it's just going to slide up and stop and stay there. Okay, so we have the same force diagram before, so in this case it's moving up. Okay, that's the direction of the velocity, and so we have kinetic friction in this case. Uh, so if I draw the force diagram, it's going to look like this. Mg, normal force. Now it's moving up, so friction is actually down the plane. Okay, and now I have to do make a decision. I have to be careful about my choice of axes. You know, I could pick the x-axis this way and the y-axis that way. It will work, and you can do that. If you do that, though, then I will have an acceleration in both the x and the y direction, and that's going to make it more complicated. If I pick this, then the acceleration in the y direction that's the angle theta, is zero. And that's going to make it easier because here I have F net vector is MA. And you'll notice what we're doing in here. We're actually doing two types. I know the acceleration, one of these accelerations and not the other. So it's, a, it's kind of like this. Remember I said you can either know something about the motion of the forces. In this case, I'm doing both. So let's write this as F net X equals M ax f net y equals m a y equals zero. So in this case, I know the acceleration in the y direction is zero because it stays on the surface of this plane. And by choosing the coordinate system this way, that makes things easier. But I don't know the acceleration in the x direction. Okay, so let's just write down our forces. So in the y direction, I have n minus mg cosine theta equals zero. So this is my adjacent side of the triangle, this is my opposite side of the triangle, and mg is the hypotenuse. So mg cosine theta is the adjacent side. And it's in the negative y direction. Uh, now let's do the same thing for the uh, the x direction. So I have uh, f, I'll write it over here, f net x, I wrote that weird, equals the frictional force, it's in the x direction, friction that's kinetic, not static. And then plus mg sine theta equals max. So both of these are pulling in that direction. It is moving up the plane, but the acceleration is down the plane. That's okay. Um, okay, I want to find the acceleration. So let's just, uh, if I want, let's divide by the mass. So I get ax equals F friction over M. Again, that looks weird because I... Let's rewrite that. AX equals F friction kinetic over M uh, plus G sine theta. And let's say I know theta, I know the mass. That's, that's something we're just, we can get later. Okay, but what about this friction force? Well, I can use friction force kinetic equals mu k times n, where that's the coefficient of kinetic friction for that particular surface. Maybe it's wood again. Maybe it has a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.25. Okay, so I don't know. We'll do that. Um, no, I wanted it lower. Let's say point, let's say it's point, uh, point 0.1. Okay. Uh, so now I can substitute this in to here, but let's go ahead and put in from this, I get N equals mg cosine theta. Remember, this is important. N, two things. N is not straight up, and N is not equal to mg. Those are two things that students make mistakes on, so be careful about that. Okay, uh, so put that in right here. The frictional force kinetic mu k mg cosine theta, and then I get... Uh, put this in up here, and I get mu k mg 
cosine theta plus, oh, but the m's cancel oh, over m, plus g sine theta equals a x. And I can put in my values there, and I'm not going to do that just because it's, it's just not fun right now. Okay, now, what about this? What if it goes up and then starts coming back down? So what if the velocity is now down the plane? What happens then? So here's my block. Same thing. But now it's moving that way. This changes the force, because now I still have the gravitational force is straight down. The normal force is still perpendicular to the plane. But now the frictional force is up the plane. So if you go back over here, what changes? In this, F net Y does not change. This equation doesn't change. The friction force doesn't change. The magnitude doesn't change. The only thing that changes, I need to put a minus sign right there. So there should be a minus sign down here. So I can, you can redo the whole problem, but this is down. I get uh, minus mu K G cosine theta plus G sine theta equals a x down. This is down and that's up. Okay, so we're going to get, this is going to be a smaller acceleration going down the plane because when it's going down the plane, gravity is pulling down the plane, friction is pulling up. When it's going up the plane, they're both pulling down, so it's going to have a higher acceleration. Okay, so that's cool. And in fact, I think I'd like to use this in a problem coming up, a real problem with real numbers, where I look at the acceleration going up and down to find the coefficient of friction. And I'll do that on another episode. I'll talk to you guys later.